technology is about to make a huge leap. The old tablets, the old iPad, 10 inch big black edge screen is going to be replaced by a screen that goes right to the edge, half the weight, very thin, lightweight to hold in bed to read. And this, if you look at those are my two ebooks that I'm doing, all, all three delivered at once for $19. Put a keyboard on it and it'll be marketed as such. This is what the new 11 inch tablet potential is and it can act as a laptop, a very competitive laptop. This is where the future is going. Use it as a laptop, use it as a camera, use it to hear your favorite music. This is my Hidden Records book. The thing about this is you can word search, you can zoom in, you can read it like that and if you want bigger uh, font, read it sideways and zoom in. This is the future of books. A whole library can fit in here. You can take pictures instantly and look at a full size 11 inch picture. We need to save our forests. Please consider my ebook offer. Three for the price of $19, you get all three. That's what the Atlantis book cover looks like on the ebook. The Alpha Omega Taurus Stargate. Let's have a look inside. The Alpha Omega Taurus Stargate, uh, the hardcover edition. The soft cover is no longer available. The Alpha symbol represents Taurus. The Omega symbol represents the portal. So if the cosmic messenger says he is from the Alpha Omega, he's saying he's from the Taurus Stargate. And he holds seven stars in his hand according to the book of Revelation. Let's go in deeper. It's my partner, Birgit Lederer, and myself. That's the page uh, dedicated for signing. These are 300 page type books, I think. Let me get it right. 364 to be precise. It's quite a long introduction, but let's get to the artifacts. Page 12, the Maya Stargate. This is an amazing piece of evidence. If you look very closely at that image, Mayan depiction from the Zuchnatal Codex, a cosmic serpent emerging out of the portal. It has a sun-like star in its center, which we found out later, the Tau symbol in its mouth, and I'll show it basically decoded here. There's the Tau T Taurus, shaped from many ancient records, uh, Pleiades area. And it seems to be showing this, that this cosmic serpent plasma ribbon, a living cosmic conduit opens out of a ring device. That was the first example. Then I look at the Egyptian variety, the Shen artifact, showing, I think it's Tutankhamun, and a strange depiction, also here on a papyrus picture above the Taurus bull, behind the back of the bull's head. And if you look closely here, they're holding little Shen artifacts, which is the small version of this. A sun on the top, and a sun on each of the cosmic serpent flying dragons. Three suns in a portal. You know where that is. Then we look at this ancient mural, the ledger panel uh, in Italy by San Di Petro di Mianzio in Siena, Italy. The depiction of Christ with three suns and the sacred feminine coming out of a portal. Looking closely at the portal, right? Okay. What's very interesting here is the T is darkened, as if to say that is the secret to Sapientia, Homo sapiens, and the T of Taurus. I'll just recap on my star maps. Obviously, star maps found all around the world showing the Pleiades area. X marks the spot, like in Stonehenge. Showing that star map right there, an exoplanet, a sun-like star near the Pleiades is what is being referenced even in the Stargate story. Understanding the solar trinity, the combination of three suns and ancient manuscripts, the Rothschild's canticles, hmm, famous name. And then of course Mithraism decoded, I'm not going to go through that now. Forbidden artifacts. I decided that the only way to 
prove my theories with ancient artifacts, I need to have replicas of them up close. The detail is crucial on all these, and I go through these artifacts. I'm holding a replica of the sun disk right here, and uh, this is one that is quite controversial, and I go through it in great detail. The Genesis Stone, Chapter 2. This stone I have uh, shown in uh, YouTube videos in, in 3D animation, and I go through it in the book as well. How it decodes those three objects there are three different sun like stars with exoplanets, and these repeat themselves in an ancient civilization and a cosmic serpent coming from it. And I show it reenacted here. And that's the Pleiades, there's the Stargate. The Elf, the Omega symbol, is the Stargate how I got into discovering that it was the Stargate. There were many other examples uh, of these cosmic serpents, three suns, there they are, they're just like that, on the Kuduru. And the Omega symbol is actually broken here, it's upside down, a piece is missing from it there. A Hindu tradition of the cosmic serpent dragon with its Omega portal open, three suns again, I show the depiction decoded here and the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, the cosmic portal. It's male anatomy again, the womb of Nut, and this ancient Suku temple, Indonesia, depiction of what I discovered was the Holy Grail. That was my uh, claim that it was in 2016. I made it uh, known on the internet and with a YouTube video that we have there's three sun-like stars creating that triangulation in the sky and Orion is showing the way underneath. There's the triangulation, Pleiades, three sun-like stars. This is the Sangreal, the ritual of the sacred bloodline as you hold it up in the east and you birth a sun disk out of it to celebrate the birth of Sol One Primary, the main one. Going through the Kuduru and looking at Gobekli Tepe, the depiction of the bird holding our sun, the bird man, sun and earth, and decoding it in front of Scorpio. How is it in front of Scorpio? If you look on a computer program and see view Pleiades, sorry, view our sun from the Pleiades, you will see it is positioned like that. If you're in the Pleiades area, looking in the position of our sun next to Sirius, Sirius is nearby here, and there'll be an exoplanet, obviously, our Earth. And of course, the Egyptian circuit goddess has a scorpion with the sun in between its pincers. No surprise. The ancients venerated our sun as the place that they arrived on in Scorpio. The cosmic serpent, the cosmic serpent, and the cosmic dragon, the cosmic lion, are all the same symbols for the living portal that attaches to the tree of life. This is literally the hand of God. It sounds far-fetched, but you need to see how I reason that. Going through different depictions of stargates with the Solomon key, Orion decoded with the sun-like star in the middle. Looking at other depictions of Cosmic serpents making the actual Omega symbol for the portal in uh, Norse mythology, in uh, the Rodney Stone, obviously, in Scotland, and ancient depictions of the cosmic lion with the Pleiades. Recapping on some of these things, and then going through ancient manuscripts. This particular one is a page showing three suns, there it is up there. And then three kings holding the Globus Crucica. It's Orion rising on the horizon in perspective to the earth. It's as the earth turns, the cross is steady. And that's what it says in ancient Latin. So the Globus Crucica, when monarchy figures hold this in their right hand, they are saying they are holding the secret of the cross, in my opinion. Looking at the Indus Civilization star map, Orion's belt, Pleiades, cosmic lion, just like on Mars, the two are actually the same thing. As you see it on Mars, the Sidonia area face on Mars, five-sided pyramid, Orion's belt on the back of it, pretty much 
is the same as the Indus Civilization seal. The Taurus Cosmic Bull, the two oldest obviously, looking closely at these pictures. There's Taurus, Pleiades behind it, sun-like star position. The Lascaux France, exactly the same thing with the face depiction and line going to it. Ryan's belt at the bottom. And then Gobekli Tepe, the horns are still visible. Scholars have missed that. There is the exit marks the spot in this collection of ringed, uh, let's call them ruins. They were once mound top ruins. We'll go through that just now. That show those stars. Orion not hunting the bull but actually showing the way to the bull. He hold, holds the lion pelt and the club. Bull's eye right there through the bull's eye, shooting through the bull's eye. That legend began to find that, the star of the gods. All those three alone. Soul one, Pleiades, uh, soul two, soul three. Looking at some of the ancient depictions of Moses, he was shown with a bull crown. Why? Because he was one that knew about the ancients from Taurus. Three religions, sorry, four of the world's greatest religions all share the same star map. Pieces of one star map, the cross of the churches, Orion, the Om symbol of Hinduism, that is the bull's crown most likely, and the bull's face, the bull's eye, and it has the exoplanet usually shown with it. Sol 1 primary of Islam that they adapted from this uh, ancient Sumerian culture, most likely an exoplanet, sun, and then of course the menorah, again celebrated with the Star of David and three orbs, all celebrating how to find the place of our origins. And then finding the Abraham depiction in an ancient temple in Jura Europos, near Aleppo. The Pleiades, big sun primary behind it with a portal door in it and it's the third one that's got the crescent with it, it's typical as the three symbols again and Abraham is shown, he pulled his arms out of his sleeve and he's crossed his arms twice, the double cross. He is Orion man depicting his knowledge of Orion Showing the way to that. That's exactly what he's showing. Looking at the uh, Voynich manuscript, it shows quite interestingly, it shows uh, a reference to what is obviously the Pleiades and a line from it to a sun with a face on it, just like Mars. And the word Taurus is decoded from that word there. One of the only words to be de uh, decoded on the Voynich manuscript. Taurus. Surprise? Oops. We've just covered that one, so I introduced it in the beginning of the book and then I go into more clues with it. Then the alpha symbol decoded. He has a depiction, and this is from Mark Scott. He realized that the crook and the flail is most likely a representation of the Omega and the Alpha very very likely. If you look at the symbol for the hieroglyph of um, to rule it shows that. A little alpha symbol let's go in close here. A little alpha symbol on a stick. That is definitely an alpha depiction and he is saying he is Orion man in this instance. He knows the secret of our origins. Looking at the origin of the alpha symbol. That is known as the Aleph and they say it was a tilted bull. This is now scholars saying the alpha symbol has its origins from a tilted bull's head. Now in astronomy the bull's head is tilted as it rises on the horizon just as you see here. I'm saying it's Taurus. Scholars are still not happy with my interpretation. Looking at the uh, Dendara zodiac disc, leg of the bull shows the way to the exit marks the spot. Let's go a bit closer for you. The yeah, Taurus bull looking at his leg behind his back. But the story how Towerette is shown, which is in a different star area, they've put this in the middle of the, the circular relief pattern. And that is the, um, uh, what do they call it? That is the Big Dipper, or the Kleber, or the Plow. That constellation, how do those shown next to each other got everything confused? showing the star 
depiction of Orion and coins as the cross of the church is there's it with the chi rogue type effect there's the exoplanet right there with its sun looking at all these repeating patterns the chi Rho is the Orion cross with the P Pleiades even the Pleiades shape makes a little P as well as a leg of the bull Looking at the discovery of the Tau symbol, it comes from this one right here. This is uh, a Hebrew talisman and it shows tetragrammaton, solve tetragrammaton. They say there are seven components, six on the outer side, six stars if you can call them that, in the typical Templar style, and then the one big one in the middle, making seven. The Alpha and Omega is here, and there it is. Tau. It even shows the T with the three suns positioned correctly orientated in a star map. The bloodline, physical origins. I look at this very famous Rosicrucian depiction. Pleiades, the sacred feminine, the three suns, one being birthed, the connection to Lady Liberty, chained. Her secret was chained by the monarchy. But here's the interesting part. Look at this right in the middle here. Huh. An ape chained with dividers measuring something in the sky. We and our ancestors invaded planet Earth. Neanderthal didn't stand a chance. That was the Earth evolved hominid. We replaced them and we evolved somewhere else. Big deal. Evolution is real, just that we arrived here. Going through the details, and of course, finding a face monument on Earth. This is a beauty. Wow, a face monument on Earth. Look at the eye remains. This is in this is called Deir Allah on the border of Jordan and Israel. This was once part of a big star map. They excavated this area here and found the first and oldest records of the word Elohim, which shows many visitors from this the cosmos in plural elohim means gods with an s somebody built on that before they realized it was an ancient sacred man-made monument just like the face on mars i was looking at some metal plates that we discovered uh, on the jordan area that show this kind of detail that i've enhanced here pleiades with the menorah and what it actually means. These are very, very involved and need to be looked at more seriously. They are very controversial, showing the star map and human origins. There's not one, there's many. The Tree of Life, Chapter 7. This is where our souls originate from, in my opinion, simply because I had a near-death experience and I came to this place through the roots. I was allowed to interact and was sent back out again, back to my uh, body being revived. going through ancient records of exactly that same place, the Maya, the Norse mythology, there's a lot more, sorry. Looking at Adam and Eve depictions with areas or gates or stargates with the cosmic serpent, teaching of first humans, or were they people that would uh, talk about the tree of life that were taken there? That's the difference. And I go through the ancient Hebrew names for Adam, even to give birth. This is what I believe this area looks like. I mean, let's zoom in to get a maximum picture on the screen. This is the place that I came to. It is man-made rocks and foliage, a pyramid with a face on it. And this group down here with seven pyramids. This is where I believe I was taught about the star map, that I would come back and look for it in ancient civilizations. This is what looks like a man in a throne. If you look at it, that it's living. You know that it's living. You, you Being there, you're actually just aware of it. But it looks like a man with a crown. But this is just the cosmic pillar that goes right through it. That connects all galaxies and stars in the universe. Looks a bit like that up close. Adam and Eve depictions. It's teaching of humanity. Uh, and the cosmic tree and learning about all knowledge. I think it was right for Eve to have access to all knowledge, but what they did with it after that, the people that took them there, the angels said they shouldn't have had that uh, experience because they would misuse it. Here's my experience inside that uh, cosmic uh, mountain. 
this pillow goes right through the middle of it and it is artificially bound by these rings. And I found that in all ancient civilizations of this tree with rings around it. And then souls celebrating as they're learning about it. The phoenix being born teaching um, out of ashes. It's the teaching of how the universe uh, can be destroyed and then recreates molecules, atoms. They all have a design code that follows this radiating light from the cosmic tree. And I find a Devonport Stella that shows that exact ceremony, the, the binding part of it, um, what I think are people lying down next to it, um, the size of the room, stars, and the whole biosphere, all matching that experience. In India, if you look at these teachings, same sort of thing, Shiva on top of a pillar, cosmic serpent, good and evil, trying to pull on each side of it. The Egyptian, this, uh, depiction of what happens after death. The jet column rings around a pillar of light that's living and the throne of creation on top of it, yeah? And the feather to be judged, marked. And then the under underworld is upside down. The soul journeys to this place in the cosmos has its own firmament. And that's the journey of the soul going through the tree of life to reborn, be reborn into a, another life. Now here is the Inca one. Actually, let's do the Sumerian one first. Suma has exactly the same thing. A cosmic pillow, rings around it, entities nurturing it, the disc that flies being taught above it, seven flared feathers coming out of it, saying it's tied to the Pleiades and the sun. The Omega symbol, see it there. And the Inca version of it, which is absolutely amazing. Same sort of thing, house of God, biosphere, souls in, souls out. Um, there's water, there's the cosmic serpent, just like the Norse depiction, roots, tree, and then sky village of the tree spirits. Isn't that amazing? All the same place that I think I experienced. So this is my testimony of it. Now, if you look at the book of Revelation, the quote is a water of life shone like crystal flowing down from the mountain throne of the tree of life. So they are depicting exactly the same thing. This is by St. John, and then of course the, in Enoch, exactly the same thing. Enoch says, the seat of the throne of God burns like fire day and night. Coincidence? Absolutely not. Okay, this is decoding the Omega symbol now. I'm going into great detail. I'm going to save this for the readers, but that's the part that needs to be proven, because that's the most important part. That's the Stargate. That's what this book's all about. Not just in Taurus and people from Taurus using it. It's the gateway, how the ancients got here. Let me get to this amazing depiction. Let's fill the screen with it right there. What on earth is that? A ring with detail on the edge on a mounted, it looks like the Aket, like a sun rising on the horizon. No, this is the gate. This is being depicted here with uh, the story of Tutankhamun, the uh, name of his, uh, uh, his name Tutankhamun is using the, uh, the beetle, can't think of it right, the scarab. And of course there's the little stargate beneath it, and the cosmic serpents coming out of it as it's active. And where do you think this might be? Where do you think they'll find it? I believe this depiction is a clue with this uh, gable ceiling that it's in the Great Pyramid, the chamber that's about to be explored, will they find a Stargate? Good question. We've been through a bit of that, looking at that connection as a Stargate. Looking at other depictions around the world, um, showing how the Maya depiction of the three suns, Omega, Orion, Cross, okay, on ancient artifacts, there's Orion rising, the swastika is in here, and we have the same thing with the comparison with ancient Hinduism and the Maya. Now we look at all the ancient co collections of these three suns and stargates. The triptych celebrating three portals to three suns, just like in the Last Supper, larger one, two smaller ones. I'm saying there are links. And I said this right from as early as 2003, that these three portals celebrated all around the world are celebrating three portals to three suns, place of our origins in the Pleiades area. Looking at the Ankh, the Ankh symbol, decoding the Ankh as a living entity. There's a lot more to the Ankh. This is Tutankhamun's mirror box. Let's have a 
filling the page. Okay, so what you have are three suns, cosmic serpents coming out of Shen's, the lotus flower, the name Tutankhamun. He is associated with the, with the primary, Sol one primary, which is always shown slightly bigger. And this is actually, that's Shen. The Shen depiction is just like this, it's bound here. This is showing that this is a portal, but it's also a dual depiction of the Tao with a gray entity. Gray entity? Aliens? How does that happen? There's the Shen comparison. You see the same binding. This is just more uh, teardrop shape for a reason. And that's where we get to decoding the teardrop shape, looking at the Shen symbol of the serpent coming out of it. Eh, very clear. Very, very clear. Now, the depictions of the Ankh being a living entity. Here we have a creature that is being depicted that has the, the power over judgment, Mart. There we go. Now we do a full comparison to ancient African, North, North African artifacts with the solar trinity and our sun in the middle. Um, this one is called the Tokolosh in Southern Africa. Same shaped, almond shaped head. Look at the strange, depicting the arms small like this. And then the Tau symbol with Tutankhamun. I believe they're showing this. Now he has an interesting thing with my history. My dad uh, helped me create the, what he remembers he saw as a child that visited him after walking home from school one day in East London in South Africa that this entity came in front of him and said do not be afraid and my dad said to him okay I'm not afraid and when he saw him it was a whole different story yes he was afraid and the entity said to him you've got to take care of your life you're an important part of the future your family is going to do something important you need to look after your life and my dad pretty much did a great job of bringing me up and understanding it all but he would never like to talk about being an abductee he thought it was something important that these were the cherubim of the biblical references to a small childlike entity well that's very childlike, isn't it? Big head, like a baby, big eyes, yeah. And of course we see the cherubim here in a Da Vinci painting. This is probably the first that people are going to see it. Mary, the Christ, blessing. I'm not sure, I think it's this one. But there's, there's sacred geometry in here of the five-sided form for the human code. Um, Ariel, I think it is, the angel. But look closely over the shoulder. This is a human angel of the... Um, human type and there's an angel here of the gray type the cherubim look closely at what's looking over Mary's shoulder eyes mouth large head her hand is over the Christ yeah this is the Christ look at its own hand made out of flowers encoded by da Vinci without being persecuted for it he showed the existence of the gray the cherubim in that painting in my opinion Okay, looking at ancient artifacts, comparing all the references to the solar trinity and Norse mythology, the Tao. It's a very interlinking story, and this is what's great about this book. Cosmic wormholes, the um, portal device. Many authors have actually recognized this as, as representing the man riding a portal, exactly as the Einstein Rosenbridge. Now, this is a beauty. This is one of my biggest findings on a papyrus, the landing of Ra on the back of the Sphinx, coming from the leg of the bull, coming from the womb of Nut. And if you look at the utterance with the womb of Nut, Ra symbol, sacred stance uh, position. I'm looking at it pictographically. The, um, I think it's the vault of heaven, cosmic serpent, the yank, three dots in a row going vertical, most likely Orion's belt story of humanity and life being given from the sun that is birthed from the womb of Nut. And then it tells you the story about this ship that flies and the man's head and the bird body to show it could fly. Its own terra firma is above the ground. You see it right there above the ground. The Asaro statue, the, let's look at the close-up version, the Asaro statue was there, the dream steel that was between the legs that's its crown identifying it's what it is the back of the sphinx is flat that is a disc radiating light with three legs in my opinion that is a flying saucer in full detail i go through the full decoding part of it yeah you can sneak and press pause and get most of it or read the book 
I like giving information free. That's what I was here to do. Books are for people that can afford them. Ancient Stargate devices. The Indus seal, the alpha symbol, a Stargate. Going through many different versions of the Ouroboros, three sun-like portals, Pleiades. Looking closely at this papyrus, the Dharma Hero papyrus, Cosmic Serpent, Ouroboros, I think it's student common, crook and flail, alpha and omega. The big red part is the sun behind the back of the bull's head and between the two lines representing the sphinx. Two lines representing the sphinx. Hmm. How does that come about? Go into a little bit of detail, but look at the uh, Codex Zushnato. It shows, in my opinion, the Stargate in the closed position here. And here's where we got that other one. The Stargate function with the serpent coming out of it. And we have a uh, point of uh, departure, point of arrival here on Earth, the Inca Gods. So it's an upside down Amiga for point of arrival and the upright one, point of departure. Now, I found that on the Kudurus, I found that in many ancient cases, all connect the cosmic serpent between these devices. There it is right there, don't need to go through it again. I'll recap on some more detail. Looking at the Aztec Stargate, this is, in my opinion, this is three meters high. If I was standing here, I'd only be able to reach up to there. There, I believe, is the Pleiades depiction and stars. And this is Orion, the cross of Orion, Orion's belt through the middle. I'll show it in great detail. I'll look at other examples to try and decode their Stargate. There's a big circular a ring and the deity stepping out of it that's mounted on a base here. This is my decoding part of it. Then looking at the Tutuhukan, same example, cosmic serpents entwined, three suns, all those symbols are all here. Ancient astronauts look closely at their faces with earphones, microphones. Yep. And these swirls are the cosmic conduits and a reference to the Pleiades. Cosmic Lion, the Triascal, another reference for the three suns, and the strange portal lion that flies, it's just more about the Cosmic Lion Serpent. And of course, looking at Pictish Cosmic Dragon, uh, the, the Triascal, or the three suns here, and it's part of a dragon. It's very hard to see the details. So I've tried to depict it, chat if you can make sense that it's tail, mouth opening with three suns. It needs experts, but this is probably the Pleiades reference here at the top and there's a Z formation symbol which is for Orion and we look at that very closely there it is again there's your Z underneath the cosmic dragon the portal three suns and possibly that's a reference to the Pleiades okay more detail against Indonesia Alpha Omega Taurus Lion cosmic dragon portal and the deities and large-headed entities Save it for the reader. Gone through those. This is a great one for me. When people say dragons and the Christ story, Orion's belt cost uh, three uh, stars in the sun, one shown with the planet, one with a cross, and the third one here. But uh, he's pointing to the three above him here, and also the, th well, some say it's probably our sun over here, and that's what we follow from our sun through three stars in the sky of Orion's belt but it's a cosmic dragon shown in a friendly way this could have been what inspired the Pink Panther cartoons because it's a friendly puma cosmic puma cosmic line same thing and there's a P being formed here and the cross beneath it the Chiro Birgit Lederer credit for that she realized that was the Chiro symbol and there's the whole depiction of it with the cosmic dragon now look closely in what's in its tail, in my opinion, that is our solar system. Or could also be the three suns in depiction around each other with our sun in the middle. That's probably the most likely part of it. But our solar system is the point of arrival. Okay, here we're going through upside down Amigas and the, uh, the right way around. Point of origin, point of arrival. I'm not sure which one's which. It's a bit of a debate. You have to guess a little bit here. But one is a point of origin, one is a point of arrival, and it's one big cosmic serpent. The Mayan calendar. Now decoding that huge, big, uh, they call it the Mayan calendar, or Mayan, in my opinion, it's a Stargate plug. 
there it is right there decoding it as Orion with the Pleiades understanding who Bullon Yokte is this deity that comes probably in the 20, 2027 from the Pleiades sun like star planet and he explains the cleaver and the cross of Orion on his shield and the Pleiades with the bird that's very very important because we find we use that symbol with the bird uh, to find civilization and the Pleiades in other depictions and of course Orion is here in this depiction at the bottom showing the way three in a row the cross to that and this whole green thing here is a very weird way of showing this portal to the Pleiades it's like a uh, imagine it being a, a plan view this is the the stargate in front and they go in and out the stargate and this connects to the cosmic dragon it's like a big mouth going into a mouth going to the detail of course the cosmic line stargate uh, this is the end of civilization seal Ryan's bell Pleiades cosmic line dragon tree of life is part of the dragon it connects to its mouth near the Pleiades and that's where the ancestors come from other depictions in Egypt comparing Egypt with Sumer half uh, Omega symbol the Omega symbol is her hair here would you believe let's look at it rather than the decoded part there it is there's the Omega match the three horns of um, Taurus on her head for the three sun stars and made as a portal like a funnel opening and she comes out of it the portal here is shown with the serpent in her hand standing on the line both of them the two-headed line just like in Egypt uh, symbols and there is a, a a sun star on her feet which I believe matches that one above her head in Egypt there's an exact same story being told Compared to Sumerian artifacts, Pleiades, exoplanet, three stars rising on the horizon, man within a cosmic dragon. Do the math, man coming out of cosmic dragon portals. This is a beauty. This one is being pillaged now by a Hollywood big icon. He even uses my images with my name on it and everything. Goodness gracious. It's the discovery by B.C. Shepard of the lion connection to our Sphinx in Egypt and the Pleiades of Sidonia here Mars face DNA pyramid that is the star map three suns in that triangulation Orion's belt on the back these are the parts that I discovered were part of the star map that go with the lion but this DNA pyramid on the mouth of the lion this is probably what it once looked like re recreated by Martin Monogob this is what it what it once looked like this is the water edge of an, a lost ocean this is probably what that area looked like from deep space. And I go through the detail comparing it now to the Nemra Dagi lion for the stars. It has a star right by on the tip of its nose by its mouth. Pleiades is here. And Orion's belt is here on the back of the lion. Remember that? Yep, no match. Also with the coin, Pleiades, lion head, important sun-like star, the place of the three suns. Mars star map just going through some of the star maps that the correlations are no coincidence then we're looking at the green lion uh, mythology an ancient secret society of the lion with the sun by its mouth seven stars decoding it yep Manly P. Hall knew about it look at the lion's face again three sun-like stars by its mouth the crown is another symbol for the portal Looking at Nostradamus, what he knew about the Pleiades, three stars in a row to find this cosmic dragon portal in its tail, the sword, the cosmic serpent that travels through to the area of Scorpio, where our sun resides. Inca depictions of uh, Kapak, there's the portal, there's the cosmic lion Puma, the ring on the tongue, he's pointing a rod the bird to found civilization either a crescent or the bull of Taurus and the portal all decoded all in detail whoops going through that and now we're comparing to the Hermetic Brotherhood seal three sun like stars one two the six pointed star in the middle seven stars for the Pleiades the cosmic serpent to show the way to them 
the angels, the eagle, the bull's head, and I think it's the lion down here, all decoded in the Ouroboros, the serpent eating its tail, the cosmic portal. Looking at the Key of Solomon Stargate, decoding the Key of Solomon, comes from the British Library in the Clavicular Solomon's manuscript, matches the Key of Solomon on top of the Vatican, and he's pointing the way to the secret of the Vatican. It's a star map. Star Castle is the X of Marks' spot, seven hills of Rome, three great markers, two with Egyptian obelisks. The cheer robe is here with the male anatomy on the cross showing the way. Ryan's belt wasn't just a belt in some ancient origins, it's the male anatomy. And the Pope looks over this on Urbi et Orbi. Coin showing the same thing, cross rising on the horizon, Helios. And the fish symbol made of seven dots. What could it be? Most likely the Pleiades. And that is the key of Solomon looking at Rome from above. There's Vatican City. That's the, the hand part of the key. The cross is there. And then, of course, the exit marks the spot is the star castle. And the human form fits inside that star castle to tell the story. Covered that. Now, in Solomon's cipher puzzle, we go through the breakdown of Orion's belt. Shows the way to the star of the gods with four planets. That's the ecliptic, the Aket symbol. Yep, the Aket symbol is right there. Okay, so it's saying that is the key of Solomon, and there it moves across to the end. It's true shape. He had has shown how tradition has shown it as a double cross. The cross of the churches is Orion. Then we decode the outer ring. It's like dialing up in the movie, dialing up the address. All these little stars have little lines in them. Just put them together, going anti clockwise, and guess what you get? A depiction of the Pleiades. Surprise? Looking at ancient manuscripts as well, of course the, the British flag, what do you think that came from? Yeah, the cross of the churches, the Solomon Key, the place that monarchy has protected for many generations as a place tied to our origins. Now this is showing a queen of the future in Revelations holding the grail, which is again the star map, and the chiro, same star map, two different symbols for the same thing. And this pattern Martin Molnogob of Hungary realized is probably showing three suns, three symbols, the eight-pointed cross we knew was one for a sun. And in this strange connection, like looks like a swastika, and then we have another S down here. Would you believe if you fill in those portions, you get that shape with those three suns? It is the star map, and the dragon is saddened. Yeah, that has seven heads. Let's go bigger again. Look at the sad face in it. Why? Because the monarchy system has tainted this dragon as evil. Into the dragon. Looking at depictions of cosmic dragons in Titohukan, decoded the Mayan compared to the time of the future in, in esoteric manuscripts of the Christ and people being thrown to hell through the dragon's mouth. That's exactly how it is depicted in Christianity, to send people through a portal. Comparing all of them again with more details, Nostradamus's depiction compared to the Kuduru and the uh, John D. Monad symbol with a Ra symbol, exoplanet, and the cross used to find it. Ancient manuscripts showing the two were capped. There's knots to show they were blocked off and their faces accordingly very upset being blocked off. And this is the one, this is John D.'s Monad with a cross. It has its beak emphasized as this, the ability to control it artificially. Here the beak is very weak and useless. Here the beak was big enough but damaged and didn't work. Crescent is there, the blazing star is there, and the cross is there. Those three sun-like stars match the Kuduru. Describing it exactly. Comparing the Kuduru, breaking down the Kuduru now into the star map. More detail again now with Babylon. That's the Babylon temples that Saddam Hussein rebuilt. He put his palace on top of one, but Babylon the city right there is the marker, in my opinion, for the Pleiades. There it is decoded. And of course, on top of the Babylon star maps, they have those symbols. It's shown here in one depiction, this very famous Shamash temple being mounted. This is going to be mounted on top of the temple. It has seven tiers, coincidence. And guess what was inside there? The Amiga, the Stargate. Decoded. Cosmic tree, interaction with the Omega symbol, ringed, man that flies in a disc, the Omega symbol upside down. 
Well, can it get any any more clearer? One that way around, one this way around. Nurturing it with the bag, which I believe is made of stone that has a chemical makeup that shows where they come from. The cosmic serpent will recognize that which it has created and what planet and where that person comes from. And I think the little cone device is the dragon egg that opens the stargate. So all you need is something to open it and a way to get back to your source where that stone bag came from. Depictions of the Mayan vase showing the detail of the entity using the bag. Wow, that is absolutely mind-blowing. You need to read about it. These are these stone handbags. Depictions that look like a flying ship with a weird thing coming out of it. The cosmic serpent, Taurus, back of the Taurus area being very important. It looks like the leg. You see the leg design and there's one up here. Strange. Not strange at all when you know the star map. Coded right there. Depictions of Sumerian artifacts showing the Vajra being another device that probably opens a stargate and a decoded chair and the, the rod as well as being a device to open a stargate in Egypt. Now here's an interesting development. A well-known Egyptian scholar, Ibrahim, sorry, Muhammad Ibrahim, has decoded. That is the name for Orion's belt, pronounced as that area is Sa. Ha. I took it a bit further. Pictographically, it's actually made up of a whole story. It is written. This is the scribe and the papyrus. Founding civilization. Human lineage. DNA code. Three pillars with three flags and three orbs below it. Now the reader will get this benefit. So I'm saving it for... I'm not going to be a spoiler. Follow Orion's belt. That is a symbol with a belt with three orbs on it and it's to the star of the god. So what it's saying is, it is pictographically, it is written, the founding civilization of human lineage followed the th three sacred markers of Orion's belt, which is the name of the whole thing, to the star of the gods. Wow. And it's pronounced as Sa-ha. There it is right there. And I thought, well, what if we have a little bit more detail added here? What if we show that the star is sunlight? You'd put a Ra symbol next to it. By doing that, guess what you get? Can you read it? Do you know that name? Of course we do. That's the place where the pyramids are found. That is the landmark place of Giza, Sahara. Going through more decoding of the Shen Stargates and the Kuduru Stargates. Looking now, decoding the Great Nama Tablet. Very, very simple. There's the Stargate opening there, and it's actually shown with a cosmic serpent. And there is the depiction of the strange ship with the rays coming out of it we saw just now in one of the bags. I go through the whole thing, but it's basically cosmic lying serpents. But of course, this part down here, I'll do it very quickly with you. Three sun-like stars, man touching bull's leg. Bull's leg touching man to say, hey, my story, you know about it, come from the back of the bull. That could be a home, place of origin, but three sun-like stars, three squares, seven squares on this ring for Pleiades. Go through the whole thing in detail. Seven-headed dragon, common in ancient writings all over the world, the seven-headed dragon. There's one in the Vatican chambers beneath the Vatican. We'll go through in detail of this another day going through the other one with the seven candles of the churches, which is just like the menorah in the uh, Jewish tradition. The seven naga. There they are, seven serpents. And this Egyptian one, that's India, by the way. And this is in Egypt, the little serpent heads right there. And the big one, the main one, always shown with a Ra symbol. We've gone through that already, and I'm comparing it now, the gate path, the Omega, that's on the next page of this book, Gate of Heaven in the Omega near the star cluster and of course seven angels surprise Orion cross as well right there go figure now what is the cosmic message you're going to say when he comes on the 2nd of August 2027 which is the big part of the Atlantis book he's saying he is the Alpha Omega the beginning and the end which is which is which was and which is to come that is the biggest clue how we start this chapter and in the Atlantis alien message, I go through the detail, how we got the date, which is a big part of the other book. 
depictions of dragon heads with the key to the vaults, uh, sorry, the key to open the door to hell. And guess who's being sent to hell? In this depiction, look very closely, a lot of monarchy figures. Surprise, surprise, the people that are the manipulators throughout history, and even to modern day, it's now billionaires in the 1% that are manipulators. Look, some billionaires are totally uh, f uh, free from manipulation, if you can call that. They've made money in strange ways and a lot of luck involved as well. And they, they will say hard work, but they are the, the most evil people on the planet are coincidentally type, part of that 1% of super billionaires. They're the ones that are going to be uh, hunted down, I would say, by this cosmic messenger. Somebody who comes from the heavens. There's depictions of it in Revelation reenacted in ancient books. We decode them. All the detail is there. Look at this one as well. Sun, crescent, Pleiades, happy dragon faces. This is a very gentle, loving, sacred cosmic serpent. Look at its face. Could it be any more smiling? And then different orbs for the Pleiades. going to go through that. There's Burkett Lederer's Breakthrough, The Three Sons. Okay, that's my part, the Orion's Belt. And then she realized that was the Chi Ro. The dragon is making the cross. Now, this is a coincidence in the Judas Codex that was on National Geographic. They did this picture. I've really obviously built it that it was a cloud glowing in the sky, and then Christ was saying to Judas, Judas, uh, now let's get his words. Judas, this is also your star to follow. He's following to his star. And they showed three in a row and one in line with it as being Christ telling his secret. But they didn't explain it. It's as if they knew about it, but they weren't going to go into detail. And I've shown it in a lot of references, and you can look for that story online. There's depictions of it. Why didn't they tell the full story? You know why. There's the cross of the churches, the long cross. And it makes a beautiful big sky cross through to the bullseye, through the bullseye to find the star of our ancestors. Looking at depictions of the Globus Crucicat, this is what Martin realized proves that it's Orion. If you decode that, it's just Latin, let's say translate, just the straight Latin. It says the cross is steady and the earth is turning. The earth is turning while the cross is steady. They show it with seven stars of the Pleiades. Go figure. Decoding church depictions of stargates with the Alpha Omega. All there for you to feast on. I make my official statement and what to prepare for in first contact with what I think is going to be arriving on the date of the alien message. This part I think I'm going to say for the read. I'm not going to go through too much because it's basically very important reasoning of how we must prepare and how to measure if it's good or evil with these 12 words that I was shown in my near-death experience, the definitions of good in a human personality and the, uh, the traits that make a person evil. They're just the opposite words. And it's quite an easy thing. If you just remember that from any holy book, you will know what is good and what is evil. Our holy books have got that all very confused. And of course, our people that are manipulators are trying to throw in that being them being rich and being, being privileged is all acceptable and you must bow down and be enslaved to them. And you take a look at the Eden principle, how things must be measured in a perfect human environment where nature is in harmony with humanity. The Ezekiel discovery I realized in a hundred year old Bible that it says it's a wheel within a, sorry, a wheel, a small one, within a big wheel, that both were on their sides. There is the actual references, and that is the big thing here, both upon their sides. It is a flying disc, and of course this new translated Bible that we have today says that it was an intersecting wheel. Absolute nonsense. Who has the right to change all these things? He has an ancient, well, ancient, 1892 Bible that shows Orion's belt on a cross, and there's the traditional one, the Maltese cross, the Templar cross, and how I decode that cover in all detail. Yep. It's all there, but I'm saving it for the reader or people that watch my YouTube videos. Moses followed one of these beach-shaped craft that looks like it made a down-pointing pressure to separate the oceans, just as this object was probably what created the alien message that's three miles wide in the center of the Atlanta site where I found the circular canals down-pressed 
these ellipses that filled up with salt water. They even pushed the sea back into the area to turn the big crop circle into a white depiction on a dark background. Wow, that's all in the Atlantis book, of course. And I think the uh, Vatican emblem is of, of the flying hat, the cross of the churches. And I think the current Pope knows the star map. He's shown the symbol for the Pleiades and two other sun, uh, stars, in my opinion, and the Christ story, the teaching of it, the cross, cosmic serpent ribbons, and little cherubim on those ribbons. That's just my opinion. I wonder what he thinks about that. Ancient coins with UFOs, ancient depictions of UFOs. It's so common in, in history. I mean, look at this amazing temple with umbrellas that don't have handles flying above these entities. That is the origin of the sacred umbrella, which is also similar in churches. They show the chi Ro and this gate of heaven, and um, there's supposed to be banners coming from it and wisps, strange fire beneath it. That is probably a stargate and something that comes out of the stargate. Go figure. And you follow the cross through the Pleiades to get to it. Oh, I left out that one. This one is amazing. A TV documentary covered this one, but you can't get access to researchers anymore. But this is a real depiction that exists of an, an entity, uh, the monkey god, interacting with these things in the sky. Beautiful. And this is what I think is coming. The Phoenix Lights uh, mile-long V-shaped craft. Those are the craft of our ancestors that straightened out the TV footage had it in that position the people that saw it fly over there a suburb saw it like that so this thing can straighten out depiction uh, one of the Atlantis ruins in uh, Spain is this cave in El Castillo in Puerto Visegio shows the two triangles merging the cross of origin within a portal of people this is made by people seven stars Pleiades. Now look closely at this here, right over here. I think this is the one of those long crafts, and I believe these are people disembarking because if you zoom in on the red dots, they look like that. I think it's the top view of people disembarking on the Earth arrival in Spain, Atlantis. One of those. Another beauty. Yeah. Depictions of Plato with two swastikas. Now this is where it connects to Atlantis. The Atlantis message has these two three mile wide area of these ellipses that makes Orion rising and setting one with a swastika, one with a Templar cross. Just like they celebrate the Labaru in Spain as a very sacred symbol and the cross behind it. And of course how I found Atlantis, what it once was because it left out a, a mark on the bottom of the ocean bed. And of course the Pleiades is there on the ocean floor. The star map, there's Atlantis, the, the port city in position with the Pleiades. It's also that star map that I made very important in 2003. That is now currently being attacked by plagiarism. This is where it's going. I think it's now in the next two, three years. We are probably going to have a war where they're going to enforce this on us. And if they do, you can't trade, you can't do anything without being on this matrix of being marked or tagged. It works on the 666 principle. This is a barcode proving it has sixes there. You can see that the elements of the pillars are actually sixes. And it's probably going to evolve now because the people that are building these things know that we'll see it in, in prophecy. So they're probably going to make it a QR code now. So I think that's all going to change. But it's where we are treated as a commodity. Great, we need to avoid that and understand what it's all about. The final words, I'm going to leave it for the reader, but it's how we prepare for first contact, how I prove the alien message was made literally overnight. There are no construction roads. The Spanish government said they built them for breeding zooplankton. Hmm, yeah, a lot of good that was because when that was made, strangely, that was when the global warming effect has dried this area permanently into a desert. And they knew they would leave that message there. They're not harming any, any crops at all. It's actually the end of the time of planting crops. And that's where I decoded that meaning of the message for 2027. That's all in the Atlantis book. And that's what's coming. Prepare, folks. Because this is the cosmic messenger with the dragon arriving, telling us our future, how to save ourselves and save the planet. 
because we are destroying it and we are not allowed to destroy both the 99 percent sacred souls are all connected through these cosmic dragons let's say a silver cord effect of each soul through the earth through the sun through the galaxy through wherever i don't know how far but to the tree of life that creation shares existence with every human and if there are seven billion suffering souls on the planet believe me the creation will call them home it will be a traumatic ELE -E event we all know what that is now earth life extinction event and it's something called wormwood is it apophis this rock that's coming in 2030 i tell you what if it is we're in big trouble because that means we haven't got far to go and then i go through the looking for what might be in this part of the great pyramid where they found a hollow with a scan i believe inside there is going to be a stargate or what was once that under the gabled roof exactly as you see there because that's what they found with the little robot going in there's the gable roof there's something circular at the back of it and that's where we'll end it with the earlier sumerian clay tablets precise version of the cosmic human origin star map and how it matched the template at stonehenge would come the mindset that had herschel set out to search the atlantic ocean seabed it would be this clue that would culminate in this documentary's biggest revelation. As the world was counting down to 2012, I was watching Google Earth, looking for ruins, refreshed my page, and I saw that. I recognized that curvature from somewhere. This could be a computer code. I think it's first contact. The ancients are returning. I've published a book, Herschel's Atlantis, and there's a two-hour documentary you'll see at the end of the video. These are my three books. I'm trying to promote Saving Forests, $19 for all three, one delivery. Please consider becoming a flame keeper in the here and now, or when you are gone, or as an activist. Please press pause and come back to this and you'll see the detail. But as a flame keeper, you become part of the quest to secure the interpretational copyright and visibility of the hidden records. That is the difference.